Hello friends, this is Mrs. Dulac at the Milton Public Library in Milton, Vermont. Welcome to story time. We are going to read some stories and make a craft and, uh, um, and the theme this week is uh, Mother's Day because it's coming right up. Uh, but we're going to start our story time with the Together song, which um, I think you'll catch on to pretty quickly if you don't know it and others, I'm sure you do. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because we're at the library, which is filled with books, and you're here listening to me this morning, or afternoon, and you love books, we're going to put our hands together to look like a book, just like that. And we're going to sing, The more we read together, 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 The more we read together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. Nice singing. Thank you for joining me singing that song. Well, our first book is Mother's Day by Annie Rockwell, the pictures by Lizzie Rockwell. And HarperCollins has given us permission to read this story. Mother's Day. Look at all the flowers. Evelyn, what are you going to do at school today? Mama asked me. I can't tell you, I said. That's a secret. At school, Nicholas and I walked down the hall together. He said, hi, Evelyn. Did you remember to bring one? I nodded and I showed him my shiny gold button. Mine's yellow with red stripes, he said. At circle time, Mrs. Maddox said, what holiday will we celebrate this Sunday? Mother's Day, we shouted. Good. Did everybody remember to bring a button, she asked. Everyone had. Evelyn, how will your family celebrate Mother's Day? Asked Mrs. Meadow. My mama will be very happy, I said. My big brother will come home from college and he and Papa will make bonnets and I will roll them in powdered sugar and we won't let mama help because Sunday is her special day. Yum, they look good. <clears throat> mom and I, what did I, sorry, okay. Oh, I didn't. Mom and I were, are hiking to the top of Chicksaw Mountain, said Jessica. Just the two of us. She loves to hike, and I do too. I brought the kind of sweet, fat, black, seedless grapes she loves for our picnic. Oh, that looks like fun. Dad and I are going to give Mom the birdhouse we built. It has a tiny hole, Evan said. The hole is tiny so that only wrens can fly in or out. Wrens are the cutest birds in our yard. That's what my mom says. My mother died when I was a baby, Sarah said. Dad and I live with Grandma, who's his mother. She does everything for me that mothers do. On Mother's Day, Dad and I will take her to a restaurant that has the kind of food her mom cooked. Pablo said, last week, <clears throat> my father was bulldozing, and suddenly he saw a little dogwood tree. He stopped his bulldozer just in time, and he dug it out, roots and all, and he put it in our garage. And on Mother's Day, we'll plant it in our yard. That little dogwood tree sure will make my mother happy. We're not doing anything for Mama on Mother's Day, said Charlie. Instead, she is throwing a baby shower for her twin sister, Aunt Louisa. My aunt is going to have a baby, and then she'll be a mother to her baby like Mama is to me. Dad says Mama sure is nice to share her special day with Aunt Louisa. Katie said, Daddy's been teaching me to play the violin while Mommy's at work. I can play the piece I learned for you. Katie tucked her violin under her chin, picked up the bow, and played. I practice, practice my piece every day, she said, as soon as we're finished clapping. I want to play it perfectly on Mother's Day. Mikhailo said, my mother is tired of only looking at pictures she draws. 
So my father and I decided that the best gift we could give her was an all day trip to the biggest museum in the city. On Mother's Day, we're going shopping at the mall for a new kitchen table. I took all the money out of my piggy bank, Sam said. It will help us buy my mother a new table with chairs to match. Don't forget me, said Nicholas. I know, you know I would never would, said Mrs. Maddox. My mom loves ammo, animals, but all we have is a goldfish. You know what? She's getting a puppy for Mother's Day, and I picked it out. Mrs. Madoff said it was time to make a Mother's Day present. And a lady I never saw before came into our classroom. Boys and girls, said Mrs. Madoff, here's Annie. She's my mom. She's going to show us how to make paper flowers with our buttons. Ah, that's good. We started with a circle of construction paper, and then we cut out petals from tissue paper and glued them all around the circle. That made the flower. And then we glued our button into the center of each tissue paper flower. Finally, we cut out leaves and glued them to a fuzzy pipe cleaner. Then we glued the pipe cleaner to the flower and our, our flowers had leaves and stems. My pink and red rose with its shiny gold center was the most beautiful thing in the world. That's what Mama said. She loved that rose and the bonnets that I brought to her on Mother's Day. Oh, well, that's a nice way to spend Mother's Day. The end. Mother's Day by Lizzie and Annie Rockwell. That was a very nice book. Well, we're going to do a final word story about some monkeys and their mom. The rug. And here's the bed. And here are the monkeys. Oh, here's the doctor. <laughs> Can you guess which one we're at? What flannel board we're doing? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. All right. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and he bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. One, two, three, four. Four little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. How many do we have left? One, two, three. Three little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and she bumped her head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Let's see, how many do we have left? One, two. Two little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and he bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Now, how many monkeys do we have left? That's right, just one. One little monkey jumping on the bed. Ma, he fell off and he bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Well, look at all the monkeys on him. In a big pile on the bottom. <laughs> well, now there's no more monkeys to jump on that bed. Thank goodness. Maybe they'll go to sleep now. <laughs> that was a good one. Let's see. Our next book. Oh. Called the Mother's Day Mice. It's by Eve Bunting. It's illustrated by Jan Brett. And Clarion Books has given us permission to read this to you. One oh, of my favorite ones. The Mother's Day Mice. <clears throat> That's their house. The Mother's Day Mice. Mm -hmm. Biggest little mouse wakened first. 
It was early morning and still almost dark. He tugged gently on the whiskers of Middle Mouse, who was slept next to him. It's Mother's Day, he whispered. Time to go get up and go for our presents. Middle Mouse tugged gently on the whiskers of Little Mouse, who slept between him and the wall. Mother's Day, he whispered, and they crept out of bed and tiptoed past Mother's room. Outside, one star still slept in the sky. They stopped to wash paws and face in the pail of water Mother kept by the front door. Biggest studies his watch. We have two hours before Mother wakes up. Middle and I know what we're getting for her and where to find it, and looked at Little Mouse and waited. I know what I'm getting too, Little Mouse said. Honeysuckle. Biggest shook his head. Little Mouse, honeysuckle grows only on Honeysuckle Cottage, and we know who lives at Honeysuckle Cottage. You'll have to find something else for Mother. Little Mouse wanted to argue, but Biggest Mouse was already leading, line, lining them up, one behind the other. Hold tails and be quiet as we go, he said. The dark has dangers for Little Mice. They ran across the meadow. Little Mouse liked the tough, smooth feel of his brother's tail. He thought the three of them joined together must be as long as a snake. And he didn't want to think about snakes. Ooh, look down here, there's a snake. The edges of the sky were streaked with morning, with morning, and a red fox passed them on the way to home. They crouched till the white tip of his tail disappeared in the trees. Grrr, Little Mouse said fiercely, who's afraid of him? But his voice was so weak that he couldn't hear it himself. An owl sheared above them as they lay hidden in the long grass. Little Mouse kept his eyes closed tight. If he didn't see the owl, well then the owl couldn't see him. You didn't have to squeeze my tail so hard, Middle Mouse said, told them when they stood up. I thought you might be frightened, Little Mouse said. I was telling you I was there. Middle Mouse sniffed. A strawberry patch grew at the edge of the meadow. There's my surprise for Mother, Middle Mouse said. She loves strawberries. She says the first one tastes of summer coming. Biggest Mouse boosted him so he would get the roundest, reddest berry from the top. Its way tipped him backwards as he carried it. That's a big strawberry. My surprise is here too, Biggest Mouse said, and he picked up a dandelion fluff ball and held it high in its smoky stem. It's a wish flower, a wish flower for mother. Little Mouse thought the fluff ball was as beautiful as a, the spinning of spider webs. He could see the sky through it. Mother will love it, Little Mouse said. Now we can go can we go to Honeysuckle? Get Honeysuckle? We have time, and maybe he won't be there. Biggest Mouse sighed. We'll go look, but only because you're the littlest, and it's Mother's Day. If we won't go close, Cat is always there. Oh, yeah, they don't want to find a cat, do they? Ooh, oh, Cat was there. He lay on the porch of Honeysuckle Cottage, monstrously big, monstrously black. When he yawned, his mouth was a dark spike cave. Little Mouse could see it clearly, even though they were not too close. Maybe he'll leave soon, Little Mouse whispered, and he pulled his eyes away from Cat to the honeysuckle that twined around the porch, the honeysuckle for Mother. Inside the cottage, someone was playing a piano. The tune was Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Maybe Cat likes to lie in the sun and listen to music, Little Mouse whispered. Maybe the person will stop playing soon and Cat will go away. He sniffed the honeysuckle air and pretended not to see Bigger Mouse, the biggest mouse, check the time. Dum, dum, dee, dee, dum, dum, dum. That person is not going to stop playing, Little Mouse muttered. And he set his strawberry on the ground and a beetle came on the run. Uh-oh, don't leave your strawberry there, Middle Mouse. Middle picked it up again and shooed the beetle away. Little Mouse began creeping towards the cottage on his belly. Biggest yanked him back by the tail. Stop that. Anyway, it's time to go. What if Mother wakes up on Mother's Day and all her little mice are missing? Or eaten, Little said. But inside Little Mouse's head, something had started to beat. Something wonderful. That was the beginning of an idea. Something better than honeysuckle. It's all right, Little Mouse said. The sun made a pink path across the meadow as they ran for home. Bring her a daisy, Biggest said over her shoulder. She likes daisies. Bring her a rock, Middle puffed, a small rock that's not too hard to carry. They're nice, Little Mouse said, but they're not special enough for this special day. He had something special, though. 
He had it strong and firm in his mind when they got home. Biggest stood the fluff ball in a jar beside mother's chair. Middle put the strawberry on a blue dish on the table. I'm glad I didn't roll it, he said. Sometimes I wanted to, but I carried it all the way and it isn't even squished. He glanced sideways at Little Mouse. The strawberry can be from you and me, or you too, Little Mouse. And the fluff ball will from, be from both of us, Biggest said. Little Mouse smiled. Thank you, but I brought something of my own. He thought it was funny when his brothers looked it all around and then rolled their eyes at each other. Something I've kept hidden, he said. Biggest Mouse held up a warning paw. Shh, mother's coming. Happy Mother's Day, they all shouted when she came in the kitchen. And mother said, why you remembered? Remembered? We almost got eaten three. Little Mouse began, but Biggest poked him hard. Sometimes Middle Mouse talked too much. Mother blew the fluff ball and it exploded into a million beautiful feathery seeds. Did you make a wish, Biggest said, Mouse said? Yes, a wonderful wish. Mother cut the strawberry in four pieces. I love strawberries, she said. The first ones taste of summer coming. She nibbled on an edge of the berry and closed her eyes. Little Mouse knew she was tasting sunshine and sweet corn in the cold waters of Meadow Stream. Now me, he said. He was so excited he thought he might explode like the fluff ball into a million pieces. The music he'd heard at Honeysuckle Cottage was loud in his mind and he clapped his paws and began to sing and he sang the words that he thought of as they ran home. We have brought a song to say happy happy Mother's Day. No one's mother is so nice. Love from all your little mice. Well that was wonderful mother said when he finished. How astonished his brothers were. They thought he'd had nothing and all the time he had this. Was it better than honeysuckle? Little mother, little mouse asked. Much better, said uh, mother. Honeysuckle doesn't last forever and a song does. Was it the best of all your surprises? As soon as he asked, little mouse felt mean. The song is from all of us, he said added quickly. Mother smiled. All my surprises were lovely. You each brought me something different and you each brought me something the same. Do you know what that was, little mouse? Little Mouse knew. They brought her, her their love. Mother opened her eyes, arms wide, and ran to her. They ran to her. Let's sing Little Mouse's song. Mother and her three mice swayed together as they sang, and the kitchen was warm with wishes and summer coming and music and love. Mm, that was a nice story. The Mother's Day Mice by E. Bunting, illustrated by Jan Grant. That was a good book. Now I have one more book, and it's called Mama's Day by Linda Ashman and Jane Ormond. And Simon and Schuster has given us permission to read this today. Mama's Day. Somewhere there's a mama lifting baby from a crib. Snapping rompers, looping laces, brushing crumbs from baby's bib. Somewhere there's a mama holding baby in her lap. Playing games and making music, teaching baby how to clap. There's a mama by the ocean, holding tight to her baby's hand. <laughs> Chasing waves and watching seagulls and finding seashells in the sand. That looks like that. Somewhere there's a mama on a busy street, busy city street, buying flowers, greeting neighbors, guiding baby's little feet. There's a mama in the garden, sharing secrets and a snack. And there's a mama in the market with a baby on her back. Good baby right there. Somewhere there's a mama hole, bathing baby's tiny toes, splashing water, blowing bubbles, wiping suds from baby's nose. There's a mama rocking baby in a creaky wooden chair reading books and telling stories, kissing baby's silky hair.
come where there's a mama soothing baby's tired cries, swaying slowly, hushing softly, singing quiet lullabies. Oh, they look, they're all yawning. They're all a little sleepy. There are mamas near and distant doing just what mamas do. Look at all the mamas taking care of the kids and the daddies too. <laughs> Loving babies every minute, every day. Like I love you. <laughs> Mama's Day by Linda Ashman and Jan Ormard. That was a very nice book. Now we are going to make something for Mother's Day. It can be for your mother or your grandmother or anybody you'd like to give it to. Today we are going to make some flowers for our mothers or grandmothers our aunties. So these are lilies and they're made out of hand prints. So I made these with my hand. They're pretty big. But I had my friend trace her child's um, hands so we can cut these up. So what you need is you need a straw and I have some pipe cleaner cleaners in different colors and then I have construction paper. So I have white construction paper because I made white lilies, but really you can use any color you would like. I have, I have a blue, a pink and an orange and a blue, although I don't know that I've ever seen a blue lily, but you could choose whatever, whatever you would like. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have to, to trace your hand. You can have your mom help you or your dad or maybe a big brother or sister, but you're gonna put your hand right on the piece of paper, just like I've got it, and then you're gonna trace it with a pencil. And go around, and around, and around, and around my thumb, and down and around, and there it is. I've traced my hand. And then you have to cut, cut out the hand. So I'm gonna cut out this one that I've done. It'll be a nice pink lily. And you cut it as best you can, and you can always get some help if you need it. And if mom would help, or dad, or big brother, sister, or friend, whoever around. Or you can do it yourself and practice your cutting skills. If you know how to use scissors, I'm sure some of you do. Sometimes they can be a little tricky. Sometimes Mrs. Dulac doesn't really draw quite right. <laughs> a funny looking finger over here but that's okay I'll just cut it around and no one will notice one more all right so this is my pink lily very big so now I'm gonna cut out one of my little ones from my friends this is from a very little girl little uh, boy probably more like the size you have for your hand. It's a little trickier to cut out. One, let's see, two, three fingers. One more makes four fingers. Oh, and we don't want to forget about the thumb, right? There's the thumb. There we go. like that. So we have a very little one. And she has two boys, so she she did two of them for me. Actually, I think her son did this one himself. Nice job. Let's see, that was the thumb, and this is one finger. How many fingers do you have on your hand? You'll have to count them. One, two, three, let's see, three, four, Four fingers and one thumb. Yeah, good counting, guys. There. So I have three three different sizes of hands. I have mine, 
and then two smaller ones. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to fold the hand like this. And this is the part that's the, the flower petals. And we're going to use some tape. You could use glue, but I don't think it would work as well. You also could use a stapler, but I think tape is the thing that works kind of the best on this thing, on this project. Whoops. So I'm taping it together like that. And I want to make sure I still have the hole because that's where the straw is going to go. And I'm going to put a little extra piece of tape on because I don't want this one to come apart. I don't think it will, but it's always better safe than sorry, right? So there's one, very pretty pink one. Now let's do the really little one. This is going to be cute and tricky, I think. I'm going to fold it so it's together. Ooh. I thought it was going to be tricky, and it is. There we go. I'm going to use some tape to tape this one together. And I'll make sure I have that hole. I think it's big enough. Yep, there it is. That's a tiny one, isn't it? And then one more that's not quite so small. tape on it. And you'll notice on mine that the petals are tipped around like a lily. So the way I did that was I took a pencil and I just rolled them like this. So it's both tricky, but not too bad. You probably can try it and also get some help from mom or dad or big brother or big sister. Whoa! Throwing my flowers around. Let's see. There's one more. There. Oh, another one right here. And another one right here. Because there's five. Because we have five fingers. Oops. Doesn't that look pretty? And then I take a straw and because this one's so small, I'm gonna have to cut this. I used a big one like this for my because I have a big hand. But I'll use a smaller one littler lily and all I did was I took it kind of the top of the of the straw and I twisted it like so it would stay like this just twisted it like that and you want it to be oops I twisted it a little too much I'm gonna push it up like this so it, so we can see it when we put it in and then remember I told you we needed the hole in the bottom so we're gonna put that right in the hole and I think I need to move this up a smidge. Yeah, there you go. Put it in the hole like that. So you can see the inside of the flower. The stamen, I think it's called. And then I, you could do this with tape, but I did it with a stapler, but I think you could do it with tape too. And I stapled right at the bottom and I stapled the straw and the flower so that it would stay in place. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? I brought another vase out. So, that. so let's do the really little one. I'll take another straw. I might cut off a smidge off of this one. This is tiny, tiny. I'm gonna go right up the top and twist this right around the straw. Twist it, twist it, twist it, and make it come up. Like that. And we're gonna put it right in, in that straw, that fit, that hole. Oh, it does fit, yay! And there it is, you can see the middle. And then I'll staple that again. There. And I forgot to curl my lead, my petals. So I'll just curl like that. Curl like that. Curl like that. Oops, I think you get the idea, don't you? Just like a lily. And one more. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Like I said, you can use whatever color you want to for the middle, for the uh, stamen, or and the, the the petals. The lily itself can be any color you want. Um, I like pink. 
At home, I have orange ones that bloom in the summertime and they're really pretty. And some yellow ones too. And that, if you look on the side of the road, you'll see some. And then, and there's, oh, let's see, here we go. This might be too big, but that's okay. They look pretty. And then we put it right in the hole like that. And there, just like that, we have another flower. And staple it just like that. There. And we have another flower. <laughs> so much bigger than the other ones. And there you have it. That would be a really pretty, lovely Mother's Day present for your mom. Things she would like. Well, I hope you have a great day. Get outside and play in the sunshine and be good to your mom and your dad um, and your brothers and sisters. Bye now.